Hello, you're listening to Collections in the Spotlight, an occasional series of podcasts from the Warwickshire County Record Office. Each episode, we will introduce you to one of the archive collections we hold at our building in Priory Park, Warwick, and explore the treasures it contains with the help of a special guest who knows the material better than most. In earlier episodes, we have uncovered some fascinating stories from the archives of Warwick Castle, a huge collection of around 25,000 documents, some dating back to the 12th century. But very few people know that the collection itself has an enthralling history of its own. In this, the third part of our exploration into the Castle Collection, we were privileged to speak to four former members of staff who were all archivists at Warwickshire County Record Office when the news came that the Earl of Warwick planned to sell off his archive. Mark Booth, Richard Chamberlain Brothers, Monica Orey and Christine Woodland recount the inspiring story of how the Record Office team under County Archivist Michael Farr fought to save the collection for Warwickshire and literally risked life and limb to get it onto their newly built strong room shelves. We should add that at the time of recording, in autumn 2020, COVID-19 restrictions were in force and so this interview was recorded by phone. We did our best, but please bear with us if the sound quality varies during this episode. So I'm going to start off by welcoming everybody and uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. We're going to start by asking you to tell us your names and uh, what you were doing at the record office in 1978. So Mark, if you want to kick off. Oh, right. Well, I I was one of the uh, three assistant archivists there. I think that's right, wasn't it? Yes. Two, three. Uh, Mark Booth. I joined the record office in 1971 and I was just an assistant archivist at the time. And this is Richard, and I joined the record office as an assistant archivist in 1969. And um, by the time that the Warwick Castle uh, thing was going, we had moved from our old quarters in Shire Hall to the purpose-built ones in Priory Park. That was very useful, this is Monica talking, because we Mm. had lots of space, hadn't we, at that point? Well, it seemed like it, didn't it? <laughs> you know, it seemed as if we had the space that would take the castle archives. Mm. Um, and certainly when I joined the record office, which I think was something like 1968, we were, we were still in the Shire Hall with um, a lot of rather substandard um, strong rooms downstairs, which were quite difficult to access and so on. And um, the new record office was really something quite, you know, quite other. So it was appropriate, really, that, you know, we'd already got that, and um, and then we could go on with, you know, getting it into the record office, which took quite a long time, and it'd take us mm. six weeks or something like that to actually mm. move yes. it all. And there is a very yes, famous so. photograph. There is a yes. very famous photograph of us at the bottom of Guy's Tower, um, with each with a box of archives um, and uh, taking them to the van, I suppose. And I think that was a press photography, a press photograph, wasn't it? Or yes, because like yes, yes, it was. In the end, was, the press yeah. got interested, didn't they? And they came and took photographs. Yeah. Mm. Quite right, Monica, that had it not been for the fact that we had got the new office, we couldn't possibly have coped with the, the archives back in the, uh, the Shire Hall. There just wouldn't have been any room. No, I mean, there um, wasn't there. And was there? No. So, do, do you remember when we first moved into the new office, the bottom strong room was practically completely empty apart from the quarter sessions records? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was three quarters empty. So yeah. um, this happened only four years after we moved in, and there was still lots of room. Perhaps, perhaps at this stage you, you could uh, say a little about the, um, the events of the appeal itself, how it all kicked off. And just before that, I wanted to kind of set the scene for people because what? How were people accessing the Warwick Castle records before they came to the uh, office? Were they still very, very good question. Uh, well, in fact, we did bring stuff over from the the castle to the record office. Um, it was often it was done by Jeremy Hunt, who was the um, sort of assistant clerk at the the office. Um, but we did have this arrangement with the castle. Um, there was a librarian there, Mr. Pepys, who did mm-hmm. stalwart work in sorting out the collection in mm-hmm. the 1970s. 
and um, but the arrangement was that if people wanted to look at the records, they came over to the record office and looked at them. Uh-huh. I've got a note here that um, r- r- this is part of a memo that Michael wrote, that the county archivist spent one day a week for two or three years restoring the old muniment series uh, so that the documents by their catalogue numbers were in proper sequence. And then he spent some time cleaning, boxing and listing a great many of the (laughs) uncatalogued papers, often in cold and dirty conditions. And I can imagine that's true. He nearly got locked in as well. Oh, did he? Oh. Because it, the darkness was falling, you know, it was sort of November or something. Ah. And, um, and he got engrossed in what he was doing. And I'm not quite sure whether someone came and got him out or whether he realised at the last moment that, you know, the drawbridge was about to be... <laughs> <laughs> and it was going to be left at night if he didn't get out. So, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. It must have been very cold working conditions in Guy's oh. Tower at the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it was a splendid place, actually, for the archives. They were in pretty good condition, generally yes. speaking. Yes, because there was no heating, was there? No, no heating no. at all. No. Um, but it, wasn't... it was very airy. <laughs> <laughs> So we won't complain about working in the strong rooms anymore. <laughs> no, no, not with that. They were heroic days. So there we go. So we've, we're in a situation where the archives are in Warwick Castle and you bring them across to the record office for readers to look at them. And that's all going along quite nicely. But then you hear the news that the archives are going to be sold. Can you take us back to those days? Can you tell us how you heard about that and and what that felt like? My memory is of uh, Michael having received a a letter, presumably, from the Earl, or rather from Lord Brooke, saying that um, he was going to sell the archives and offering them to the record office for this sum of £120,000. And as as Richard, uh, I think, will expound on this, but uh, he he was quite uncertain whether to go uh, to go for this offer or not. He was a bit a bit, a bit cherry about all this because it was an enormous sum. In, incidentally, uh, we've done a little bit of not me, but the others have done a bit of digging around, and um, 120,000 pounds in today's money is. Uh, according to one answer, uh, 611,000. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a vast increase. Yeah, but if you, if you looked at, say, something like labour costs, the equivalent sum would be about a million pounds. So it does depend on what yeah. you're looking at. Yeah. But it, it, indeed, it would be a, a very large sum of money, even yeah. by you know, today's yeah. standards. Yeah. And so what were you thinking at the time? Were you thinking, that's it then? Golly, we thought. <laughs> How on earth can we get this? Because it was the first. I think it was. This was the the first of the big archive sales. It, yeah. it was. I think it was the the biggest sum that any uh, local authority record office was faced with um, raising. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't. I don't recall us um, being um, sort of defeatist. I, I, th- I think we we thought, oh, this we must do it. Yes, yes, that was it. I mean, yeah. what's the record office for uh, if it can't, <laughs> um, you know, can't put up a good fight to raise what, what admittedly was an enormous sum um, to, to save the very rich uh, archives of, um, you know, the, the sort of one of the most important families in, in, in Warwickshire. And we were quite lucky yeah. because Michael knew the collection quite well, didn't he? Yes, he had been working through it. Help um, in sort of, you know, writing material that would make other people realise that um, this collection was worth saving and all that sort of thing. Yes, um, I, I think I, I think probably he knew enough about it to be able and in fact he did uh, i won't read all this out but he, he wrote a report on the in april 78 uh about the warwick castle archives uh and it goes on into some detail and gives an idea of quantities and things that says there are about twenty five thousand documents and 
um, stuff going back to the 12th century and all the rest of it. Um, so it was pretty clear that, uh, you know, it was it, it had a lot of important stuff um, in it. And it would be uh, appalling if, um, you know, if it was bought by the, um, the Americans or something. Or split up, or uh, or split yeah, up, or, yes. Yeah, they were looking at some of those, um, you know, I suppose that those places on the east coast of America where they've got a lot of British the Huntington ready and mm. the Huntington was mm. ready. Yes, the mm. Huntington. I, I have this, um, I have this uh, memory that there were suggestions uh, going around that certain plum items might have been bought by. Uh, places like the British Library or the Bodleian, um, the yeah, Sydney um, memoir that's in the collection. That was one of the things that was, oh. it was suggested that that might have been sold separately. And Michael insisted that we 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 go for it all. Once he was persuaded yeah. Yeah. to go for it, he said we yeah. must try and get everything in. Yeah, and, and that that I'm sure any archivist would say was the right course of action. Yes, not yes. those pick of you know good mm. thing. Yeah. And so what did you end up doing? Did you kind of devise a council of war and, and develop a strategy? Or did you find it easy to convince people? We went through the visitors books and we wrote a letter to everybody who's, for whom we got a, an address and so on, um, you know, saying, please, could you let us have some money, really? You know, we need a lot of money and we need your support. And we also put on various events, didn't we? Um, yes, oh, yes, we did. And, we and a number of... Sorry. I can't remember what they were, apart from E.P. Thompson, people said. He he was a good chap, wasn't he? And yes. He gave a talk. He, he, yes. he gave a talk on sale of wives. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A.L. Well, Rouse talked on Shakespeare's Dark Lady. Um, Viscount Norwich talked on Palladian architecture in England and Italy. Um, and uh, I think they all raised, you know, a hundred or a couple of hundred pounds uh, f for the for the fund. Also, uh, the open day at Maxstoke Castle that raised nearly a thousand pounds. The family made this very kind offer, yeah. and uh, it made a lot of money for us. That was in uh, September, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, they produced. Uh, I mean, they knew how to do it, so they helped us. You know, we did. I don't think mm. we could have done yeah. it on our own, but. Yeah, with all their backing, it, it, yes. it worked very well. Yeah. And did I hear you say something of an auction that you oh, ran? Oh yeah, that 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 was the last thing, and the auction raised, you know, the final amount of money plus a bit extra. Yes, mm. um, it the the auction took place um, in I think early it was early December. December. Yeah, 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 early December. Yeah. Um, and that of course was um, largely organised by you, Richard. Well, it was yes. Uh, well, well, with with help, of course. But um, yeah, I, I took I took that on, but um, with with Jocelyn and and many other contacts around the county, we we got there very That's well. Jocelyn and Morris from the museum, yes, who was who was a, a great um, a great help to us, I think, uh, particularly in persuading Michael to uh, yes, I think to, to go for the uh, for the archives. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, so that was on the 5th of December, and it raised um, 6,500, which got us got us over the line, I believe. Mm, I think yes. it did. I mean, it was just amazing, wasn't it? We were so worried about it, and it just happened in the end. Oh, yeah, I, I went through sort of cycles of, of sort of despair and <laughs> sinking, <laughs> sort of sinking feelings to, uh, to exhilaration. It was... Uh, a lot of people didn't know the record office existed. It wasn't like a library or something like that. No. Everybody mm. knew exactly what a library was. Mm. So one had to have these little efforts to, you know, make them realise exactly what was at stake and, you know, what we did. Mm. No, it, it certainly gave us a tremendous amount of publicity, yeah. and which was all good. How long, how long did you actually have to raise the money? Uh, well, the um, the Earl, in a memo to Michael, um, said that uh, we could have six months, and if uh, we were sh we were um, obviously making good headway, 
uh, we could have another three months. So um, it was uh, yeah, Mar- end, late late March to um, early December. Yeah, but but the 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 response of of the local authorities in giving some really large sums that was in you know it couldn't have been done without that. Well, but the V&A. Oh, well, uh, yeah, and V&A, yes, yeah. They supplied the bulk of the money, really, the, um, the, the, the V&A and then the county council and the yes. district council and yeah. all the other district councils all chipped in. And yeah. that made a tremendous difference. It did. And I think, I don't know when those uh, sums were, were pledged, and, 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 uh, but as soon as that started rolling in, we knew that we had a sort of um, wind in our sails, didn't we? Yes. I think we wrote to all of them, and then they responded and said, you know, we will give you £5 or whatever it is. Yes, and I've got a wonderful little note here. Uh, the, we, the, there's a whole batch of receipts of, from uh, all letters saying, sorry, we can't do anything. And this, this one, please accept the cheque from the Blue Tit Patrol First <laughs> Ulster Guides. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how much it was for. But it's so, so charming. Well, we did we did do a great deal to sort of raise and net awareness of the collection. Do you remember all those exhibitions? Well, we had a big exhibition on at the uh, County Museum. We and did. Miss Morris again. Yes, and Rosemary and probably had some hand in that. Uh, she did. Well, she did the poster, I think, for it. So the, the museum was a great help there. But it also it went out then to some of the district councils. All our sort of contacts with mm. the what was known as the landed gentry. Um, yes. You know, was used and asked, and and a lot of them came yes. up and said, "Yes, that's fine. We'll do something for you." So you've raised the money, and uh, and the agreement has been signed, and you've got the archive. Uh, and you mentioned earlier the famous photograph of you carrying the archive out of Guy's Tower. Yeah. What what was happening there? Were you um, was it just the staff who had to go and load up the vans? We had to put the archives in the right order into a whole series of well, our standard um, you know cardboard boxes, and um, and we each then sort of walked down with these uh, one at a time and put them in the van, and then we walked back up and got some more. Uh, there must have been hundreds of boxes. Yeah, and this was yeah, the very hundreds last of steps. <laughs> hund- hundreds of steps. Yes, in the the Birmingham Post, Wednesday, January the seventeenth, nineteen seventy nine. Ah, oh. there's a picture of you, Mark, Mike, and I, all with a great yes. huge pile of books that, in front of us, and it, it says making off with the historic contents of Warwick Castle. They also had pictures of us moving the uh, the archives you know into the strong room as well oh really i didn't know that well it wasn't it wasn't just the press because the tv were there as well we had uh, both the bbc and atv yeah. at this different times yes so, they, yeah, there was a lot of interest in this yes there was it's obvious that this is a very important collection um and that you moved heaven and earth to make sure it stayed in warwickshire Say something about why it's so important. Um, is it about the owners and the inhabitants, the characters within the castle, or the fact that they were so prominent in national affairs and key events in history? Well, it, it's, a, it's a mixture of things, isn't it? It's, it is all of those. Um, it is a vast collection, as, as you know. It um, occupies an awful lot of shelving down in our strong rooms, um, and it covers... Uh, a vast number of uh, parishes within the county and without the county, many out county estates as well. So there are records in here um, of it that will be of interest to to local people. There are records that will be of interest to people who are studying the nobility at various periods. Um, and of course, the castle has always been a very prominent building in in national and local life. Uh, so it has a wealth of information. I think we wouldn't have, you know, everybody knew Warwick Castle, and that was a help, wasn't it, really? You didn't have to, if it had been a rather obscure um, collection that we knew about, but nobody else did, that would have made it much more difficult. Mm. But Mm. the fact that, you know, everybody knew Warwick Castle, um, 
I think probably helped an awful lot. Am I right in thinking that Michael would have used the uh, a lot of the stuff in the castle collection for he, he did he write the, the the castle section in the VCH? He wrote the uh, account of the castle manor, etc. And yes, yeah. uh, he, yeah. he did use that. But uh, there were many things that uh, he probably didn't have a chance to, to get round to. And there are many unexplored sources there. But it does contain material going right back to the 12th century. Yes. I, would, I would guess myself that the, the strength of the collection lies in the uh, estate accounts and the vouchers, uh, mm. the maps, the wonderful series of maps. Yes, the maps are wonderful. Um, the uh, the deed theories, of course, are absolutely essential for anybody studying local history in Warwickshire. Mm. <laughs> um, and they contain fragments of the records of the medieval earls of Warwick. Um, extremely interesting, extremely important. It is used by people uh, extensively. I'm, I'm sure you know that, Sharon, yourself, from uh, your period at the record office. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and one of the things that upsets us all at the record office is the cataloguing side of things. Um, ah. As you say, the, it seems to, that many hands have had uh, have been involved in that. Um, um, what implications did that have when you were moving um, the all of the, the stuff. You say you were having to put it in order as you were there, but how did you know what the order was? The collection, uh, it falls, falls into three or four main parts. It had been catalogued, a lot of the records had been catalogued in the early 19th century uh, oh, they... by the estate agent, Spuck and Baker, um, who had parceled up all the, the deeds, etc., and there is a huge uh, catalogue of that, which is extremely, still extremely useful. Then the collection had been worked over by the Reverend Harvey Bloom in the early 20th century, who abstracted a lot of the earlier material from the Buckham Baker series and put it in a separate sort of chronological series. And then uh, later on, Mr. Peppers uh, started work on the uncatalogued material, a lot of which had come from the estate office in the, I think, in the 1950s or 60s. Uh, but still, when we went to the castle to collect the records, up in the uppermost room, there were still uh, lots and lots of sacks filled with miscellaneous records <laughs> lying on the floor, uh, which we had to box up and so the dust bring sort down. Of moved off the most we walked up the stairs to pick them up and yep yes. take them down the 87 yep. steps or whatever it was to um, something like that monica yes it was it was a, a down a spiral up and down a spiral staircase which got sort of very very healthy and, exercise yes it was i don't think i could do it now but um <laughs> I'm sure I couldn't. <laughs> they, were steep, you know, they, they got steeper, didn't they, and narrower, and you were carrying stuff in front of you, so you couldn't mm. really see them putting your feet. Um, it was a miracle that, you know, um, no one happened um, to fall down or anything like that. I'm, I'm sure... Yeah, even more importantly, that the record survived intact. <laughs> Without any blood on them. <laughs> Without any blood. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm sure it would be a health and safety issue today. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you probably have to get specialist removal firm in to do it now at vast expense. <laughs> well, of course, we were young and fit in those days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even fitter when you'd finished. <laughs> even fitter. I yeah, know, we were very tired. Well, survived. I, <laughs> I, I think we were exhausted, actually, by the time we'd done all that. Because mm, probably <laughs> climbing up and down 87 steps, and they were very narrow, and you you had to look where you were putting your feet, but you couldn't because you've got these documents in front of you, so you mm. just mm. hope for the best. Of course, we did have that wonderful um, afternoon off after we'd got all the records in. Well, we played in the snow, didn't we? Well, yeah. We played in oh, the we snow. went tobogganing. We went tobogganing. Michael yes. tobogganing. And we all had the afternoon off, apart from Colin Hughes, who looked after the office, and we tobogganed in Priory Park. We did. <laughs> oh, well, there should be some photos of that. I think there might be. I'm making that my personal mission to find those now. <laughs> well, 
Just as so long as the county council doesn't uh, dock us our wages for that day off. <laughs> Reduce your pension. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So there was quite a lot of extra time, didn't we, one way and the other, with over this business? I think so. And oh, yeah, yeah, but... yeah but I, I, we put a lot of effort into it. <laughs> yes, I think you can safely say you earned your afternoon off. We've actually interviewed um, a couple of researchers who regularly come in to look at various aspects of the, the collection um, and are constantly discovering new little bits and pieces that haven't been fully catalogued yet, only partially. Yes, some of them were fully, you know, it's always a joy. Cataloging would take forever, I think. And, hmm. it, it is a very confusing collection. Uh, my, uh, before I retired, I did attempt to write up a, a series of notes I think we're partly based on work that Richard had done earlier, uh, just to make it plain how how the existing catalogue, or rather catalogues, work and how they interconnect. But obviously it is a very difficult thing, and going down to find things can be a nightmare, um, mm. because it's not necessarily obvious uh, in which particular box a particular item is. It would be really nice uh, to, to, to have a... Uh, a complete uh, overhaul of the catalogue, a complete recataloging exercise done, but of course that is going to be a huge job. But it would make the collection much more um, valuable, much more usable. Certainly, uh, when when they when we did get the collection in, and it took us about a month to uh, to get it all in from the castle, we did think about. Uh, trying to, to recatalogue large bits of it, but we, we very quickly realised that this was going to be a mammoth job and well beyond uh, the capabilities that we had in the, in the office at the time. It was just we, we just didn't have enough time to do it. But I remember um, working in the old sorting room, looking at the uh, the voucher series and trying to sort all that out. I think Monica was there as well. Richard was there as well. We were all in there. Michael was there. <laughs> we were trying trying to get this collection into shape and just realising in the end it was far too big a job. And, of course, um, it was uh, shortly after we got the collection in that uh, Christine came and joined us. Yes, yeah, so that's when she, the account. Yeah, she, that's when she get, was given the job by Michael of sorting out the uh, the account series, which did need doing, uh, and she did a wonderful job on it. I, I didn't think I finished the wonderful job. It, I, he didn't give me the, the task on the accounts right away. Um, I think it was when I came back after one of my maternity leaves. Because I do remember falling asleep over the accounts of an article. <laughs> <laughs> the, account, the, the accounts are if, if you're interested in the castle as an estate. The, the, the estate accounts are a wonderful series. I mean, you know, you could do all sorts of social or agricultural or whatever histories from the stuff there. And I, I have, a, I'm not sure if I, my memory is correct and. We all know how inaccurate our memories have become. But I'm sure I remember looking through the very early ones and finding when the Lord Brook, who was killed in the Civil War, was brought back pickled in a barrel of... <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, they're, they're, you have to account for these things. Didn't know that <laughs> one. <laughs> so I was thinking after all of that, did any of you end up with a favourite item in the collection or anything that you were, you are or remain sentimental about? Or do you hate the sight of it all now? <laughs> cool. One of the things that has always uh, attracted me were the naval account books from the uh, yeah. 1599, 1603, which are wonderful, uh, detailed accounts of the Royal Navy at that period. <laughs> And the other, they're not, you know, the, there's a gap, isn't there, in the official series. So yeah. somebody, mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. made made off with them and didn't return them, I suppose, at some point. Well, presumably this was Fulk Greville, who uh, who was treasurer of the Navy. That must have been a, who had them. Yeah, but they they're certainly are wonderful. I mean, you get all these names of ships, some of them still in the yeah. Royal Navy today. <laughs> <laughs> and it was beautifully written, wasn't it? It was yes, beautifully written. 
highly Absolutely. decorated, yes. Yeah. That was just one collection amongst many, in fact, wasn't it, the Castle yes. Archive? You know, we've yeah. got other um, large collections. Not not the same, obviously, but, um, you know, it wasn't quite on its own. Yeah. No, it yeah. is the biggest. I think it is the biggest of all our collections. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. Can you think of any of the other ones that you, you were bringing in at the time? Lordy, one would have through one's diaries to remember. <laughs> oh, I, I did have a note in my diaries. I was looking at this the other day uh, about starting work on the Eagle engineering records, which must have come in at oh, about Oh, period. yes. Yes. Uh, in fact, I think they came in a bit earlier, but I must have been starting work on it at that time. Oh, I'll tell you what did come in, not long afterwards, of course, was the Throckmorton stuff. Oh, yeah. really? As, as early as, as close as that? Mm. And that wasn't a, I mean, it, it wasn't as huge as Warwick Castle, but there was quite a lot of it. I think we've been sort of trying to nudge them for some while and then, you know, sort of come and get it or something like that. Mm. <laughs> yes. There are one or two families that still have their own, you know, their archives in their residences. Well, certainly uh, Lord Ailes did, you see, yes. and there was a disastrous fire. Yes, I know, that was that was pretty and, um, pretty tragic. That's awful. And I remember going up, you know, and the staircase had practically gone away, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went on a Sunday afternoon with our hard hats. Yeah. And yes. it was basically, um, you know, it had gone, really. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff that we kept was, was, I don't think it could ever be opened up even. It would just break into, you know, burnt right. off. Yeah. Well, do you remember Michael spending ages and ages microfilming, particularly the account book series, where um, he used film that was, oh, I think he, he used it, um, I think it was a special low contrast, was it, or high contrast film, to show up the writing on the burnt page bit. Oh, yes. Didn't he yeah. use, wasn't it infrared and ultraviolet? He did it under two. No, I don't think we could do that at the stage. It was, a, it was a special film. He got advice from somebody. Um, and it, you yeah, took it at two exposures. So one would show up the writing on the unburnt bit and one would show up the writing on the burnt bits. Yeah. But that, of course, was uh, not long after Warwick Castle Archives came in. Was it? Was it 1980 that happened? It was around then. Yes, it wasn't I, long afterwards. I, I was in the office, so yes. yes, you you were there, Christine. Yeah, yeah. My memory of that is all those bundles being brought back, and as you say, the strong room was still pretty empty, and so we had mm. lots of room to spread it around. Which no, yes, because it was drying out, wasn't it? It was drying out. A lot of it stank. It stank of rot because it was rotting parchment. Yes, mm -hmm. it did. And it was yes. This dreadful rotting flesh smell. Yes, <laughs> yes. And was, oh. What we did in the end with a lot of the uh, bundles of deeds that were rotting, we put them in the uh, freezer at the museum. That's and right. And going over with some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had there was a great sort of freezer shortage, so I brought home because I had a big chest freezer then, a huge Bible that had come out of some church that oh. had got oh yeah, yeah, and that so I took that into my freezer at home to make space. <laughs> <these rocks. laughs> oh. Tales from the archives. At all, you see, uh, it is, must it be is a case of you all did just what was necessary. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is just fantastic. Oh, we were dedicated, weren't we, really? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come in with all my medals on. <laughs> <laughs> we did enjoy our work. <laughs> oh, we had a lot of laughs, actually, yeah. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. OK, and so to just kind of um, wind that up then, what, uh, which item or aspect of the collection uh, sums up Warwick Castle for you? I don't know, all sorts of things. The yeah, yes. wonderful yeah. smell of wood preservative that comes out of the, the old boxes when you walk down into the strong room B. <laughs> 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 and then, then there's the, every now and again when you open up uh, some of the older documents, you come across sand in the, in the middle of the document. Which is um, from the sandstone in uh, Guy's Tower. Yes, that's very evocative oh, when right. you come across that. Oh, that's amazing! It brings 
back distant and, and very happy memories for me and I think for all of us because it was a uh, it, it, it perhaps seemed a very very big ask to begin with but you know we did it mm. and um, and that's wonderful one of the things that the record office can always look back on with pride I would think yes I think so yeah definitely and the, you know we got a new record office to put them in and uh, we're all properly built and plenty of space of course now you need a yet further strong rooms probably <laughs> but <laughs> There have been quite a lot of in increases in space, haven't there? But it, it will just go on. Yeah. Like it's that, the nature of the thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, is, it is indeed. Archives grow. It, they it, always it. will. Wonderful. Well, on that note, um, I'd like to say thank you to you all for helping us out with this uh, with this podcast. And, uh, and thank you for sharing those memories with us today. Well, thank you for asking us. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Remember it again. Right. <laughs> <laughs>